Unity 6.2 just dropped and I spent two hours watching their live stream so you don't have to. And honestly, if you're still using 6.1 for development, you're probably making your life way harder than it needs to be. Love it or hate it, AI is here. And Unity just dropped their AI beta. They showed off some pretty wild stuff. AI creating entire scenes from a simple prompt, generating custom sounds from audio samples. But the feature that actually impressed me the most, the way you can control the AI. Instead of letting AI run wild in your project, you can actually control exactly how much help you want. Type slash ask, and it explains what's wrong with your code. Type slash run, and it actually does the work for you, like adjusting lighting or placing assets. The release meant that if you decide to install Unity AI, they are also offering unlimited Unity points during the beta test, which I'm assuming is like, you know, AI credits, so you can test out the AI to your heart's content. But here's where I think things get a little interesting and also a little scary. On one hand, this could save a ton of time with debugging or with tedious tasks. But on the other hand, I'm genuinely worried what happens to new developers who become too dependent on this. What happens to these developers when their projects become an unoptimized mess and they don't even understand the basic concepts of something like, I don't know, static game objects? I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know AI is a hot topic. And speaking of which, another hot topic, if you're worried about AI collecting your data, and after everything with Unity lately, I, see I don't blame you. But they did just announce something that might actually help with that data fear. Unity's introducing their developer data framework, which is basically Unity's way of saying, hey, uh, we're gonna be more transparent about what data we collect and give you more control over it. Honestly, this feels like a response to all the backlash they've gotten over data usage and pricing changes. They're promising transparency and control over your data within the Unity ecosystem. Unity said that this is also laying down the groundwork for additional live surface capabilities they're planning to release. So basically they are building the foundation for more connected features down the line, but also allowing you to control what data goes in and out. After everything that's happened with Unity's business decisions lately, more transparency is definitely a step in the right direction. Unity's been working overtime to undo all that damage from the Riccatello era, and moves like this are exactly what the community needs to see. So hopefully Unity continues down this line because making sure we have control over our data is incredibly important. Anyway, enough about corporate transparency. Let's get back to the features that will actually save you some time. Unity has unleashed their new mesh LOD feature to automatically generate levels of detail for your models. The process is literally three clicks. You import your model, check generate mesh LOD and apply. Pretty shrimple. But here's what's actually happening under the hood. The system collapses edges in your model until no valid edge collapses are possible. Now, there is a catch to this. It can break UV seams and normals. So keep that in mind for your lighting setup. Oh, and they also mentioned that it works poorly with foliage right now or any models with open edges. So use it for those at your own risk. For anyone trying to optimize their games, having different LOD levels is a massive performance boost. And having Unity auto generate them that is hours of work saved on every model now the real question is how well does this actually work and i'm going to be definitely testing this out but this could be a game changer for optimization workflows Speaking of making workflows easier, this next feature has been denied to XR users until now, while flat screen developers have had it for years. We are finally getting World Space UI for the UI toolkit. And if you're an XR developer, this is a massive change for us. See, we've been stuck using the old UI system while flat screen developers have got all the cool new UI features, but not anymore. The power of the new UI system comes from style sheets. Think like CSS for Unity. Want a specific button type to change in your project? Well, one change in your style sheet and boom, every UI element updated across your entire project. No more manually updating 50 different buttons. I'll be honest, I wasn't crazy about CSS when I built websites, but I am even less crazy about changing buttons manually across an entire project. Unity says that the new UI system isn't going to replace the old system yet, but depending on adoption, the old UI system system might get the axe in the future. So it might be time to start learning this. 
just in case. Whether you're building flat games or VR experiences, this next feature affects everyone because we all deal with crashes and performance issues. 6.2 brings new diagnostic features to help you monitor performance and stability. You now get enhanced observability across different devices, which means you can actually see how your game performs in the real world, not just on your, you know, development machine. When you check the project overview on the Unity dashboard, you'll see detailed diagnostic reports that break down crashes and performance issues your players are actually experiencing. Any improvements to diagnostics is a huge win in my book. Every tool that we get that helps us monitor performance and hunt down bottlenecks will just make our game stronger and our lives a little easier. All right, for my XR developers, Unity is giving us more love in the Android XR department. They've added support for hand mesh, so you can visualize hand meshes and use them for occlusion. Next, they have dynamic refresh rate. This lets you adjust the refresh rate during runtime for smoother performance. So better performance means less VR sickness, which means happier users who can actually use your app. They've also added visibility mesh occlusion. Now, this sounds technical, but basically it reduces the GPU overhead for post-processing effects in URP. In plain English, you can now use things like color grading and vignetting on untethered devices without killing your performance. Now, the announcements of these additional features is kind of funny. We still don't have the hardware to test all this out, but I do appreciate Unity getting it ready for when the headsets are finally in our hands. Now we just need to get the headsets in our hands. Alrighty, let me cover the last couple of features before I wrap this whole thing up. Unity also dropped the Graph Toolkit, basically their way of letting you build custom node-based tools right in the editor. If you ever want to create a custom tool but found Graph View to be too complicated, this could be a huge change for you. Unity says their early testers were able to build solutions two times faster with Graph Toolkit compared to their old Graph View system. This same toolkit is being used internally for features like their new animation system that they're working on that I'm very excited for. So you're literally going to be using the same tools that Unity developers are using. So I don't think this is going to go away anytime soon. It helps to handle all the annoying stuff for you like serialization, undo, redo, all that back end work that you might not want to deal with. It's perfect for simplifying complex systems or letting non-coders edit content in a visual way. It's still in the experimental phase though, so don't get too surprised if it goofs up from time to time. Either way, it should help anyone out who is interested in making custom editor tools. Overall, this has been a really impressive update. Unity is continuing to deliver on their promises of faster engine iterations to give us more tools, features, and optimization. Their data developer framework, I think, will help build trust in the community by giving us the power to control our data. And things like MeshLod or the Graph Toolkit will be huge in helping us save time and optimizing our projects. This recent update has gotten me pretty jazzed about the next milestone version, which will be 6.3. So yeah, big props to the Unity team with this update and for giving us so much to play with. If you found this video helpful, consider helping me out a little bit with a quick little like on the video and maybe even checking out my Patreon. But that is gonna be it for this one. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.